that's about it for now. I'll leave you to it. You can go gather your gear, get your stuff together, and stand by for that very first video. The very first one we're going to talk about, the next video that should be released here besides the podcast is... Welcome to Northwoods Kindred. I'm your goalie, Bodvar, and on this channel we discuss all things Asatru Kindred related. So hit that subscribe button if you want to see how we do it in the Northwoods. Today's video we're going to talk about Gothi training. One thing I hear a lot on in the comments section or with private messages with people is that uh, it's almost like a phenomenon of the ghosting Gothi. And it is whoever was bringing them in or teaching them or leading their kindred just poof disappeared. I think every one of you should have the ability to do this job if you're called to it. So we're going to kind of introduce a little bit of training uh, to teach people new to the path how to be a Gothi, how to lead training, and how to build and lead a kindred. Now you've been around here for this whole year, you've seen that this channel is primarily focused on the Asatru Kindred, and we spent a lot of our efforts this year building uh, how to do ritual, why to do ritual, what are these various different things, how to take an oath, why to take an oath, or, or that kind of stuff. So it was a lot of really ground level information about the Asatru faith. We're developing a kind of a program now, and we want to take it a little bit farther as far as the, the training and the education goes on to being leadership in this faith, not just a participant or a solitary practitioner. So if you're into that, you're going to enjoy this ride that we're getting ready to go on. So before we can begin down this path and I can show you the, you know, the techniques and the tools and the, you know, the job description essentially of a Gothi, then we have to get one thing clear. I am not in conflict with your practice. Nothing that I do or say should negate anything that you do in your personal practice. I'm not here to tell you you're doing it wrong or, or anything. All I'm here to do is show the way that we do it, the way that we've eventually evolved into, into performing our practice and uh, in lack of any other better information, that's what I'm here to provide. Some place to start where you can do what I give you, take the practice, keep what works for you, throw away what doesn't. Um, I do get a fair amount of aggression from people saying that I'm wrong or I did this wrong or I shouldn't be telling people they don't belong in this faith. I want to make it super clear that I don't say that. I've never said that. I've never even alluded to the fact that if somebody does something different than us, that they don't belong in this faith. That's not my call to make. And, uh, and I would caution you against anyone who actually believes that they have all the answers. So I don't claim any of that stuff. And I want you to know, maybe I'll just put a disclaimer at the beginning of every video that this is our way. This is our practice and you are welcome to observe it and borrow from it. So I want to talk a little bit about dogma versus standardization because they're not really the same. Um, dogmatic is you have to do it this way or, you know, everything's wrong and you're wasting your time. Whereas standardization means we have a method and a means in which we do what we do and we rarely deviate from it, but it's applicable to whatever we're doing. So if we're doing an Odin bloat or a Balder bloat or a Frigga bloat or even a Disa bloat, for the most part, a lot of it is exactly the same. We will have a fire. We will have a procession. Um, there will be no electronics other than whatever the filmer is filming with. Um, there, there will be, uh, they will carry stuff out to the vase. So we have a way that we do things and it's very standardized. But it's not dogmatic because we can stray from that as much as we want. So I want to really beat that idea home so that you know that we're showing you our standard practice, but you can deviate from that and make it, you know, to meet whatever your standard practice is or to develop a standard practice of your own. And don't let anybody tell you that it's dogmatic just to have a standard practice. What it really is, is it is comfortable for everybody involved and it's a lot less stress and um, it's a lot more enjoyable if everybody knows the program and the way that it's unfolding um, just from habit. Also, there's a lot of good new information that will be coming out in this, I guess for lack of a better term, series that we're going to be putting together this year. Um, a lot of it is based on my own research and my own experience, a lot of my own experience. And since I'm giving this away, I would very much appreciate a shout out if you use my information in your own programs or videos or or interactions with your kindred or, or whatever. I don't need you to always run around and be like, Goli Bobar did that, Goli Bobar did that. But if you're, if you're quoting 
the work that I've done, I would very much appreciate, uh, you know, I'll point back to the channel and help us all grow and come up together. I will also want to encourage you to stay like super flexible about all of this, about the entire practice. Often we get new information, you know, archeologists discover some new site or some new accoutrement and they decode it and it changes what we know. Like there's a bracket that was just found, which I think stretches our, our understanding of the belief in Odin back another 150 or 200 years, um, possibly even longer. They found a, a recently found a new rune stone that they decoded, which pushed back our understanding of where the runes um, or how they evolved through Scandinavia and, and they're learning information about that every day. We can't be so rigid in our belief system from the information yesterday that we can't take this new information and grow and get closer to the final result which would be uh, authenticity. Now in some cases we get uh, some comments and I'm sure you do about cultural appropriation using this or using that or doing this or doing that. We don't generally concern ourselves with it too much. We really try to stick to the Nordic culture and the Nordic pantheon well, when we honor our gods. But some things have been appropriated and we understand. And some things we don't know about. Sometimes you do something and somebody's like, hey, that comes from this other you know, traditional practice. It doesn't ever belong to you. And we have to go back and we have to do the research and we have to kind of rethink how we do things. That's all part of the process. It doesn't mean that anybody's being nefarious. Um, if you culturally appropriate a, a thing from a culture that you're not even aware that it belonged to them, it's not an intentional slight at their culture. It's a learning process that we all have to go through. So we want to be open to that. And, we, and the point of that is to really question everything. So even if I say like, this is the way we do it, and this is the way I've always done it, or this is the way I was taught, um, question that. Question why was he taught this way or where did the information come from or what's the root of it? Uh, does it go back into the Norse culture or does it go back into the Germanic culture or some other culture that's unrelated? Um, do the research. Be inquisitive and, and be skeptical of the things that you hear not only from me but from the other people that are out here trying to show how to do this stuff because we get a lot of it wrong. And sometimes we have to make corrections and sometimes we just have to evolve our patterns of thinking in order to keep up with the times. One thing we're going to discuss in bits and pieces throughout this next series is how to build a kindred. And that's how to meet other heathens, where to meet other heathens, how to go about the whole, uh, I guess, courting process with, with new heathens. Because there's always this fascination, this infatuation with a new heathen. Oh, wow, I found this new person and they're totally into what I'm into and they took Tyr as their patron and, and they really like the runes and we need to get together and we need to do this thing. And you get so infatuated with it um, that you make decisions before you really, really know who you're dealing with. And we've been guilty of it here as well. And, uh, and Gallahorn's been guilty of it, you know, our mother kindred. It's a natural thing and it happens, but I want to caution against it. Uh, we can all, all we can do is learn from our mistakes. And one of those mistakes is bringing people in too close too fast. So we have traditions here on how we on how we recruit people, how we find people, how we develop them and then decide whether or not they will be a good fit with this kindred. Uh, I want to reveal a lot of that stuff to you through the course of this with detail and examples as they happen, as well as some things that have happened previously during this past year. So now as I'm talking about walking people down this path of the Gothi, for simplicity's sake, every time I say Gothi, you can just apply that mentally to a female or a male. Uh, there are various different words to describe the female version of the priest. And then in other places like Iceland, they don't use anything. It's just Gothi across the board. Just know that I'll say Gothi and Gigia a lot, and I'll be referring to the male and female. But if I just say Gothi, um, most of those things also apply to the female side of the equation. Now, historically, a Gothi was a was the leader of the ritual. He had some various levels of political power in a district, as well as probably the ear of the nobility, and and some some other little things that he was capable of, like deciding disputes or selling disputes, or possibly even um, adjudicating laws probably collected some taxes in some places because he was in charge of the temples. So there was a lot of old roles like that. Most of those don't really apply to the modern Gothi. So we'll talk a lot about what's the job of the modern Gothi, what's their role within a kindred and beyond. 
um, such as, you know, my job, one of my jobs here with the Northwoods Kindred is outreach. And so I'm really kind of the face of the kindred. And while you know a lot, who a lot of my kinsmen are, you probably don't know them as intimately as you know me, because that's my role is to be that front man as the Gothi of the kindred um, and the chieftain, which is a separate job title altogether. We'll get into great detail on a lot of that kind of stuff. I just want to let you know that it, is a, it was a traditional role that's been evolved into the future with a modern Asatru kindred as opposed to a district, a heathen or a pagan district in Iceland or Norway back in the day. So the question that's probably in your head right now is how do you train a Gothi? And there's a couple of models. I've really only seen three models and I've been in Asatru for 30 years and there's only three training models. Training model one, generally the most uh, desired is a one-on-one -on -one mentorship. That's how I was trained. I've been mentored by my Gothi for over 20 years, um, known him a little bit longer than that, and we've had a, a really, really good relationship. And anytime I need help getting through these things, I have someone, a mentor that I can go to and learn from. Someone whose morals and ethics and, and practices and standards, you know, they, they walk hand in hand with my own. So uh, that, I understand, is a very tall order. It's very hard to find somebody who not only thinks and acts like you, but is in a position to mentor you through pretty much anything. Um, but that would be the ideal way to do it, and that was more likely the way it was done in the old days. Although the Godar ship back in the, in the Viking era was an inherited thing. It could be passed down, it could be traded, it could be sold. It was property as well as a title and a role. It's not that way anymore today. The other way a Godi would be trained would be through some sort of a formal training course. There are a couple of different organizations that offer Gothi training and Gothi recognition, probably even certification with a, um, with a certificate of ordination um, through certain agencies. You know, different, I'm not going to mention any of them, but there are a few. If you really want to dig deep and, and find that, you can find that. They're going to train very specifically to their own dogma and they're going to train um, and they're going to certify in a way that really is only reputable to their own people. So any of those organizations, that's what it's going to be. If you're a Gothi for this organization, this organization doesn't give a squat. You're still just a civilian and vice versa, back and forth. So the truth is nobody has any real authority to do it. The only authority they have is granted by the U.S. government who doesn't know jack <laughs> about Asatru. So who gave me the authority to train Gothi? Nobody. And nobody gave anybody else the authority either. What they did was they trained, they studied, they learned, they practiced, they developed a system and they went out with it and they said, okay, we're making Gothis for our organization. Um, I don't have an organization that requires Gothis. We're not building a mega church or any of that garbage. I just wanna show you the way that I was developed by my mentor and the things that I would have really enjoyed knowing because we've kind of developed each other along the way as well. And the, the benefit to the way that I'm giving this information away is that I am giving this information away. Uh, you're not required to join an organization. You're not required to pay for anything. You're not required to follow my dogma. You can just take it and use it or don't. You know, it doesn't really matter. But it's at least a program that, because um, I know a lot of us, we don't have a lot of money to go investing in, in fictitious programs with, with a very, very small window of people who actually recognize the completion of it. It's not like a degree from a local college and it's recognized by all schools that follow the same program. It's, uh, it's different. Um, you would, if you wanted to be universally recognized, you would have to go individually and pay for these programs through everyone. But if you just wanted to run a kindred effectively, this is, this will get you there. And the third way, uh, and probably the most dominant way that we've seen the Gothi getting their job is just by default. Either they had a Gothi who bailed uh, in the middle of while they were trying to build something, which happens m more often than you might think. Uh, as a matter of fact, put it down in the comments. If your Gothi bailed on you, put it down in the comments because we're getting ready to make you the Gothi. Um, or they created something like we built here with the Northwoods and Somebody's got to be in charge. Somebody has to do the rituals. So by default, you would have just said, hey, I guess I'll be the Gothi and do my best to learn as we go. Um, that happens as well. So the three ways are mentorship, pay to play, and you just get dropped in the pool with the sharks and learn how to fight them off and swim. You just do it that way. Uh, so what this is, is this is kind of an antidote to that third one. To you getting dropped into the role. Now maybe we can work together. And this is 
This can be interactive. You can ask me questions and I'll put them in the next video or I'll answer them or I'll do whatever I can do to help you be the most efficient go thee for whatever you have going on. And now just so this video isn't a complete bust, I actually want to give you something that you can use. So I'm going to give you two things here. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the, the areas that you're going to want to start studying or at least collecting. Uh, I would say right now, if I was going to give you a homework assignment, I would say go collect as many digital files as you can of all the sagas, the yettas, new, the new age stuff, as many books and, and files as you can get your hands on. Collect them up, consolidate them, and then, here's the kicker, organize them into nice little neat packages that make sense to you. No matter what kind of books they are, whether they're story form or poetic translations or old source data or new age stuff or encyclopedic style books. I got a whole podcast on that. You can watch that on it and it's got some good references. But no matter what kind of data you get, organize it into the right pockets or the right uh, windows of, of information because it makes it a lot easier to reference if you need to go to a source or to an encyclopedic version or to a new age practice and dig something up. And the reason I say digital copies is because they're super easy to reference. You can go through and you can do a word search and find the specific word you're looking for and it'll help you um, obviously read them first if you can, if you have time or whatever, but eventually you just want to get to the meat and potatoes and sometimes you got to type in meat and potatoes to find that. One thing, if you can get your hands on it, I've got a link in my uh, Amazon store, is The Viking Age by Paul B. Duchelieu. It's a two-volume set. They're about 20 bucks a piece. If you're leading a kindred, uh, and it's anything like my kindred, they're going to catch you off guard with a lot of stuff. So it's really nice to have that particular reference, that particular one on hand. And the beauty of it is it goes down in, in great detail listing all aspects of the Viking Age. So it opens up with some Bronze Age and some Stone Age stuff and then some grave mounds and burial finds and bog finds and that kind of stuff. But the chapters break down so exquisitely into the dress of men and women, the sport of men and women, um, laws, ritual, practice, human sacrifice, witchcraft, omens. So it, there's so many chapters in those two volumes that almost no matter what's going on, you can jump to a chapter and it's going to give you kind of the synopsis of the kind of a snapshot of the culture at the time and then point you back to different references and other resources in the lore. So I find that to be an invaluable resource, especially when doing something new like, hey, we just had a baby, can you name it? You know, like it's nice to be able to have some kind of resource to look back at and then uh, kind of design a naming ritual. We'll get into those rituals as we go, but there's always an opportunity for somebody to spring something new on you and you can probably find a way to do it by digging through that particular manual. I would recommend not only a digital copy, but a physical copy. So if you have Kindle, that's a really good way to go because you can really search it thoroughly. Um, but the physical copy, I'll put links in the description to the physical copy in my Amazon store. And I say my Amazon store because there's various different print houses that print on demand. And I've already ordered two copies of each of these books from this particular one, and they've both been great. Some of the other things we're going to have to go into detail on is just basic kindred leadership, which is just people skills and how to how to mentor and coach people. You know, people come, kinsmen and even people outside come to, if they know that you're a Gothi or the leader of a kindred, they come to you like they would come to their clergy, like they would go to their priest or their pastor and say, hey, I have this issue. How do we work through it? Hey, we want to get married, but we're having some problems. Can you help us kind of do some couples counseling? Can you help us figure out where to meet in the middle on the God since she's a Christian and I am also true? You're going to get asked how to do a lot of these counseling things that don't really have a lot to do with the role of, you know, sacrificing a sheep. Like it's completely different sideline thing that people aren't necessarily prepared for. But I, uh, as we move on, I'll help you prepare for that kind of work as well. Life rituals is another big one. Our people... Our people in history celebrated life rituals, births, deaths, uh, crowning achievements. All these things were celebrated with festivities and rituals and ordeals and practices. And some of those we have good records of. Some of them we can reference. Some of them we can't. We only have minor light references and passing to these things, which lets us know that they happened, just not how they happened. And in those cases, we can take what we know of all the other rituals and practices and put something together that might be anyone's best guess as close enough. But the important part of it is we're still using our own ingenuity to celebrate these life achievements 
that um, that people go through that we're close to just as our ancestors did, even if we don't do it in the exact same way. We're going to do a series on runes. And it's something I've been kind of struggling with back and forth because uh, I don't feel like you can get as much out of the runes if it's given to you. There's things that you have to do to earn certain pieces of runic uh, knowledge. You have to be inspired. You have to study. You have to put the work in for that to work. So we'll do a basic series on the runes because I think that every Gothi or Kindred leader, whether he's the Vidki or the Volva or whatever of the whole Kindred, is irrelevant. He should understand it to a point where in absence of that person, he can at least fill the role. He or she, the, the kindred leadership, should be able to fill the role. So we'll get some basic runic data in as well. And we'll probably get into a little bit more advanced techniques because as we progress through the basics, you will be earning your way to those advanced techniques. If you get a little excited about this, I know I am. If you get a little excited about this and you can't wait to begin this journey, I got a little more homework for you because you're going to need some things in order to do this effectively. And uh, I'm, so I'm going to give you a little list here. So get out your chicken scratcher and, and make some notes because these things are going to be important to um, making the data that would give you palatable, being more than just a passing video that you watch and then discard, but it's actually something that you'll get some work out of and it will give it will put you in a position to set you up to transfer this data forward in the future, to train your kinsmen, to train your children, to train your new uh, friends and your organization that you're building. So no matter what your ultimate goal is by uh, tuning in here, you'll get more out of it if you put more into it. And to put more into it, all I'm requiring is your attention and a little bit of, a, a little bit of effort to develop the material that I give you. So here we go, things you'll need. I will not at any time, at least not in the foreseeable future, have the ability to ordain Godar. So I would say get online, and I'm not going to recommend one, but I'll tell you that there's multiple agencies that you can go to for free. Fill out your email and your name, click a button, and you are ordained. Now that is a legal document. You are legally ordained. Um, now some states require proof of that, so you may have to buy the certificate from these people. Um, I know I have. This is the best way to do it. Uh, if you, some of these organizations will ordain you as, you know, if you pay and go through their training program and all that business, they'll ordain you as Godi whatever, Gija whatever for this organization. Now, if you just go to something like one of the online ones that you can do for free and put in, you know, Godi Fred Bear, they're going to print the certificate as Godi Fred Bear. You are ordained as Godi Fred Bear. Um, or you could do Frederick A. Bear Son. Uh, as your real name, and you can get that Gothi certificate. Now, the uh, the right way to do it, depending on how your state does it, is get a legal certificate with your legal and binding name, and then get another certificate that says Gothi, uh, whatever your Asa true name is or whichever. So get online, sign up for these things, get ordained for free, and don't even pay for the certificate or anything. Don't pay for it till you need it, but it will be, if you don't need it for two years, you can still jump on there, log on with your email, print off the certificate, and the date will be today's date. So get that in there early so you have that longer kind of cred window when it's time for you to actually start doing those, those projects. I give that to people that I mentor personally, and on one occasion with the military, the first thing the chaplain asked that new leader of the military kindred was, are you ordained yet? That was the first thing he asked. So um, when he said, yes, I am, he came back and told me, he's like, Good call on that one, Gothi. So that's one thing that I would highly recommend you do first and foremost. It's kind of like getting your ham license to, to talk on uh, on ham radio. You take, the, you learn the material to pass the test. You take the test and then you learn while you're doing. Same thing with your Gothi ship. Get ordained, get it ready to go, and we'll learn while you're doing. So get yourself a set of ritual tools. You'll see that I tend to follow a pretty strict pattern. I've always got an oath ring, um, a physical hammer, and a bully. There's some historic precedence to that that we'll get into down the road, or you can watch some other videos that I've done about it. But uh, you're going to need a basic ritual kit because we're going to talk about rituals. And you're probably going to want to go out and perform some of these smaller rituals immediately. And you won't be able to do that if you don't have the basics of a ritual kit. So I've got videos on that as well. Really encourage you to kind of go down my page and review some of the videos we put out last year because they're going to help you be really, really primed and ready for this next coming year. So certainly I want to encourage you to take notes on the, the pieces and parts and the videos that are important to you. Now, one thing I'm going to do when I'm doing the videos is for some of these, 
I'm going to put together a handout or a, a download. Now those downloads will be a buck, buck fifty, whatever, uh, maybe a little more depending on how much work I have to put into it on my website. But here's kind of the caveat that if you go to my website and you drop a buck and a half on a download every other video or whatever, that money obviously it goes to me and helps support this and it also gives me feedback and says that you're engaging and you want to be a part of it. But don't feel obligated to do that. I would Obviously, I'm going to appreciate that because it's the only way that I can actually really get any kind of um, revenue from doing this. But the, the importance is I'll give you the information. But if you don't want to have to take notes, this is a shortcut. It's just not a free shortcut. But all the information will be in the video itself, enough for you to do everything that the lesson is about. So don't feel like I'm trying to muscle you or obligate you to go jump into some pay to play scheme. But almost everywhere else where you get go the training, there's a fee window. And the only way that we can organize it so there is no fee window is by essentially putting out something where you can voluntarily help if you would like to. Also, we have a, a Discord community that you can join and converse with us personally one-on-one um, -on -one, if you can catch me there and then we also have patreon if you want to support us at a different level and get some other perks to go with that so another piece of equipment you're going to want is you're going to want to have a, a decent set of runes that you're comfortable with casting so the little clay ones and stuff that break you're probably not going to want to do that but as we as we progress we're going to talk about runes rune readings and castings even though it's not a it's not a um traditional as far as we can tell practice it is definitely has value in the awesome true community and i think that every godi should have some basics on how to cast runes which means you should have a set of runes that are um, usable for that purpose and of course we have a limited number we have a couple sets on our website that are available for purchase at a fair price but i would encourage you to make your own but if you can't or you don't have the resources or whatever uh, there's there's a couple of really nice sets there from made out of different materials mostly wooden I'm going to recommend that you get yourself a binder of some sort and put in here these leaves. So what we'll do is, if, especially if you're going to be taking notes or, or downloading our handouts, like this is a five page handout on uh, getting to know Odin, which will be a video coming up really soon. And then this handout will be available to download. And then you can download these handouts, put them in your binder, and you will eventually build a full binder for the go the the idea is that uh, you get to engage in every video and then take notes or download the handout put it in the binder put everything in whatever order makes sense to you and you can have a section on getting to know the gods uh, performing basic rituals performing life rituals doing other go the tasks that are necessary for running a kindred or for uh, um, being the spiritual leader of your of your group or your collective. So now with your with your physical library, I would highly recommend as, as soon as you can put it together, get those two copies of the Viking Age by Paul B. Duchelieu. I, I probably ain't saying it right, but it's French. Um, get yourself a good Havamal reference that you like. Um, the older the better, I think. I like Auden and Taylor. Um, I like Hollanders probably the best, but uh, there's a zillion different translations of it. Get yourself a copy of Samander's Edda that is in print form. Uh, again, Hollander's is a good one, and it has the Havamal in there with the Edda. So a copy of the Poetic Edda. Get a copy of the, the younger Edda, Snorri's Edda, because they're different <laughs> they're and contradictory sometimes, so it's nice to have them both. Um, and then a good practice eventually would be to get a good copy of the Heimskringla and the Sagas of the Icelanders because there's a wealth of of daily living activity that's in there that we can kind of massage out of the stories and then incorporate into our own lives in the modern era where it's applicable. So those, I think those would be a really good list of books to have and they're all listed in my Amazon store and, uh, and I'll have some links down below that can get you there as well as to my website. And also uh, another kind of a lead into this is go to my website. I have three downloads that are free. Just download them. And they are, plus that'll get you familiar with not only my website, but the process of ordering through it. Um, but there are three downloads. One is a, a basic handout on doing ritual. One is a basic handout on the gods and goddesses of Asatru. And one is a basic handout on what is Asatru. And I encourage you to not only download them, but copy, make, you know, 
three or four copies of each flyer and keep them in your little satchel or your bag or whatever so that when you run into people and they notice your hammer and they want to talk about it, you can give them a flyer and be like, this is what Asatru is. These are our gods. This is our ritual. Bam! See you next time. And then, you know, like be the rock star. And you can do that by downloading those, printing them off. And if you don't like them, if you don't like the way we do stuff, like I said, I encourage you to just change things. Just make your own flyer or make your own handout. or But certainly do it the way you want. Um, you don't have to do things the way I say. Um, I don't. I can't make that more clear. That I and I have no power. I have no authority, granted by the U.S. government or otherwise. I'm just a guy who's been doing it a long time and is willing to take you on the ride with me if you're willing to go. So that's as far as my authority stretches, and uh, and I hope that you can appreciate that. And with that, I will leave you to the collection of your gear while we sit down and make the very first video in our Gothi training program. Um, if you got any good ideas as to what to call it, I'm all ears because we don't really have a name for it yet. Um, the most descriptive term is Gothi Training Program, and uh, that doesn't have any doesn't have any pizzazz. You know what I mean? It doesn't have any fire. If you didn't already subscribe, make sure you do that because that's the only way you're going to get notified. And maybe not even then. So check back once in a while. Also, we are generally good for at least one video a week. If you haven't seen one in a while, YouTube's screwing you. Don't let them do that. Come back and check on your own. So another feature that we have on this channel is I also have the Northwoods Kindred podcast. So that's a good long hour of me just running my gums. So if you're kind of into that, there's a lot of really good information that you can glean from that. And that's about it for now. I'll leave you to it. You can go gather your gear, get your stuff together, and stand by for that very first video. The very first one we're going to talk about, the next video that should be released here besides the podcast, is Getting to Know Odin. May your connection to the gods and the folk grow stronger every day. Thor Vigi, my friends. Thank you.